Hey, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we're going to be reviewing the first season of the Book of Boba Fett. This is the latest in the Star Wars uh, TV series you know, that they've been doing. We were, we're all big fans of The Mandalorian. Um, we watched both seasons. We reviewed them. And very positive review of Mandalorian. Love it. Yeah, and you know, the Book of Boba Fett is essentially a spin-off because it's it's happening very much not only in the same universe, you know, obviously the Star Wars universe, but on the same on a planet, you know, that is frequented yeah. by the Mandalorian and there's a lot of overlap in the characters. Um so we're going to again as always we like to start with a spoiler free review just to give you our overall impression and then we're going to delve into some of the details, what worked, what didn't work, what we liked, etc. So overall impression, I give it a solid B+. Plus. It was enjoyable. It was. It felt like I was watching more of The Mandalorian, which I think was very, very deliberate. Mm -hmm. If you like The Mandalorian, this is basically an extension of that. Um, and I think overall it worked. The plot was good. The character of Boba Fett is evolved. It was good to see the you know how he got from you know essentially uh, the the last the, the number. Um, Sarlacc, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> from episode the movie uh, six to to where he is now. Mm. Um, so I liked it. I liked it overall. But, it, you know, there, there definitely was some headroom in terms of storytelling quality and overall quality. Um, there, there, I think they could have done a better job in certain places. But a good solid B+. Uh, what did you guys think? I was I was a disappointed. I mean, okay. I, I enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed, I, I liked the casting. Um, definitely loved having um, the main actor, you know, come back to play yeah. Boba Fett, which is, of course, you know, that that, that makes perfect sense. Literally the same guy. Yeah. Um, you know, I had some problems with it. You know, I thought that the storytelling was a little thin. Mm -hmm. um, they made some odd decisions about Boba Fett, in my opinion, that I'll get into during the spoiler um, mm -hmm. version. Um, I also feel like, you know, they, you know, people who watched it will know what I'm about to say, but they shoehorned something else in the middle of the series, which I thought was a little odd. Mm -hmm. As much as I loved those episodes, I mean, absolutely loved those episodes, they didn't really have much to do with Boba Fett. Well, there were two episodes without Boba Fett. Right. You know, in the Boba, in the story of Boba Fett. Which I just thought was odd. It right? was odd. It was, but I agree with you, it was odd, but good. It's like, I enjoyed those episodes, but I'm like, okay. Yeah, it was good. No Boba it was Fett good. But I think that they were like just over, all right. So my, this is what I took away from that, is that, you know, and, and this is a decision I think that, you know, these various studios have to make, you know, when we review either, you know, Marvel or Star Trek or Star Wars or whatever, is um, when you're focusing on one character, you're not really focusing on one character. You're telling another part of the same story, mostly from their perspective, but it's mm -hmm. still the same world. It's still the same story. The other characters are still going out and doing their thing. And I just think the, you know, the, the, they were softening the whole idea of this story is only about this one character. I get, I get you know? that, I get that, but it was so divergent. Yeah. Um, and believe me, when you see this, if you haven't seen it yet, when you see it, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. You're going <laughs> to absolutely love it, but it, to me, it just, you know, it, I don't know, I don't understand. I yeah. felt like they wanted to show something and they just used the Boba Fett show well, to show I it. I think, again, but if, if they're gonna, you know, soften this a concept of we're doing, like, this is this is um, uh, we're telling we're telling the story of more stories in this world. It's not necessarily about this one person, but then when you call it the book of Boba Fett, yeah, you know, it's, it's got to be about Boba Fett, yeah. And um, so that was we call it something else. Yeah. If it's if you're going to just have it be more of an ensemble cast and and mixing mixing in different characters but you, to you, that extent. You need to watch it. If you're a Star yeah. Wars fan and if you're watching The Mandalorian, you absolutely have yeah. to watch it. It's canon and it's very yeah. important. If you like Mandalorian, watch it. Yeah. Watch Boba Fett. What did you think, Bob? Yeah, give it a solid B or, or a B plus. I, I agree with everything you said. Very, very odd, a uh, couple of things that they did, but, but it was probably a, among my most favorite things that happened in the entire season. I, I agree. <laughs> so, okay, so I've, I'm kind of torn. Uh, very odd storytelling uh, device, and has Favreau said anything about that? Like, nope, I haven't heard much about it. To be so it's just you. just weird, but but very very much worth it. If you're into, if you watch, if you enjoy Star Wars and and the Mandalorian and and Boba Fett himself, 
you're gonna love this stuff. I mean, it's definitely you got to see it. It's really yeah. I mean, you can't let's say face anything it. else other than that. They made a Check TV show about Boba Fett, a character that from his absolute origin didn't even have a real backstory. You know, yeah. like, like this character is is a remarkable character. It's he's yeah. so interesting. He captured so many people. Like I know, know that's the most interesting thing about Boba Fett is the history of just the writing of the character. He starts as a background throwaway character that had some recycled armor that was supposed to be like an elite stormtrooper armor, but they didn't and use white. it. And All white. white. Yeah. And they said, nah, they didn't use it for that, so they just repurposed it for this one bounty hunter standing behind, you know. Other bounty hunters. Other bounty hunters. And then, I mean, yeah, he did take more of a central role in The Empire Strikes Back in terms of, as for the bounty hunter, he's the one who found, you know, uh, uh, Solo. But he was so just cool. Yeah. That they they had to backfill his story. Yeah, they made story. a whole planet of plot and you know, leading ultimately to you know obviously the Mandalorian. There's you know Mandalorian fan clubs, people who make Mandalorian armor. It obviously was a central you know rope part of the Star Wars Rebels cartoon. It just became one of the most awesome side you know background stories of the Star Wars universe. Without a doubt. critical part of of the Star Wars world and canon. And um, well, yeah, and, and Boba Fett is part of that. I mean, let's know? face it, like, you know, I love Han Solo. Yeah. Love him. But I'm not going to dress up as him. I'm not like thinking about him that much. You know what I mean? Like, but, but Boba Fett, like, really did capture people's attention. There's something about him was just so. Just, I remember we, when we saw the movie for the first time, we were kids, we saw Empire Strike Back. Like, who is that guy? Yeah. I know, that guy, we were riveted on that guy. Yeah. And to the point, there was so much. The other thing is, he was so cool, we assumed that the character had to be really central to the plot. Right, exactly. And so the speculation about who yeah. Boba Fett was for Return of the Jedi was massive. It was all wrong. But the reason why it was so completely wrong is because there was this assumption that a character that cool had to be really central to the plot. Yeah. And it turns out he wasn't. And I remember and in, killed him off. in Return of the Jedi, when he gets killed off in the opening scene, spoiler. In a, in a, in a, there's a there's a time limit on spoilers, yeah. and um, the uh, you the, were like, what the hell did they I just know. do? And, and he got killed off in such a chumpy it way. It was so chumpy. We were like, that's how you off Boba Fett, and of course, instantly we knew all of the speculation about who Boba Fett was was wrong. But why why did Lucas choose to kill him so quickly? I, I still to this day don't get it. They could have milked that character for so much more. I know. I don't know. It doesn't make any yeah, sense to and me. It was, and lame. It was like a quick, lame death. What? Well, I mean, slowly digested for a thousand years. That's not quick. I mean, on screen. I, I mean, mean, on screen. <laughs> yeah. So the fact that they resurrect Boba Fett, and that wasn't his end, because he is too cool to die in that way, was, I yeah. think, makes sense. Like, yeah. it's not like, you don't think, oh, they're just doing this to retcon to bring him back. No, actually, this makes sense. And, you know, Boba Fett should have survived that. If anyone can get out of it. It's He's got the fat, armor. Right? He's got the armor. He should have gotten out of it. He's got, he's got all the doodads, you know, all the thingamabobs. So, of course, he, he got out of his, his Arlac. So Let's get to it. Let's get to it. All okay. right. Spoiler alert. Now we go to the spoiler-laden version of the show. Uh, Everyone gonna, dies. Oh, no. <laughs> there's seven episodes in season in season one of the Book of Boba Fett. There's two episodes, tw like two-thirds of the way through, that have almost no Boba Fett in them because they we pick up the Mandalorian plot line where and, he intersects and, with, he's he's going out to find um, Grogu, you know, Baby Yoda, mm -hmm. and, and he goes to Luke Skywalker. CGI Luke. A CGI Luke that was pretty seamless. Damn I mean, good. Damn pretty good. Damn good. Damn good. And you know how they created him? It was yeah. They had an actor who they was had an similar. actor play it, but they but they basically CG'd him, and the voice was all reconstructed from just all of the back you know, audio they have from, from Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. So they basically digitally recreated, you know, a digital version of Luke. And it was great. It was fantastic. But, you know, again, you, you can, you, because we know that it's not modern day Mark Hamill, we were looking for it. But again, I had to, it was so good. I'm like, I wonder if I had no idea that that had to be CG, if I would have figured out that it was CG. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's getting to the point now. to that point. Where, where they're able to deep fake a, a face and, you know, 
they can deep fake voices like nobody's business. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. it's all there. Like, you know, within a few years, it, it's going to, yeah. I think, going to be undetectable. And those scenes, just bring yourself back to those scenes. You know, you're watching. Well, Boba Bob, Fett. I never left those scenes. <laughs> I'm still I'm still thinking about them every day. No, 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 think about, I mean, we watched Boba Fett. Yeah, it's a good show. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Then you got these two episodes, these two magical episodes where you got CGI Luke and Grogu, who we all missed horribly. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're interacting. You're on the edge of your seat just like, we're laughing like a little kid because it was you, it was such great TV. Come on. But you had to wonder, you know, so there's seven episodes, two really dedicated to Mando and Grogu. Did they not have that much faith in the Boba Fett storyline and character to carry the season? I don't you know. know. You know I what don't I know. think? I'm just happy that I saw those two episodes. Yeah, the I know. only I know. thing I can think of, the only thing I can think of, and this might be a dream. This is, every man has a dream. Yeah. They, I feel like they they brought Luke back because they want to do a spin because they're there. testing to see if they could freaking do a real maybe. Movie. And, and let me tell you something. Hey, when Whoa. we thought about that with Anson Mount, we yes. were right. We were right. We were right. We were right. We could do it. We could do it. All right. So this is. The, right. I have a dream that we are going to spend time with Luke in this part of his life. Mm -hmm. yeah. That they're going to make a TV. We know that we're going to see little it. about it. We're Next gonna, to nothing. We know there is, uh, there's nothing there, right? Because they expunged all of the, uh, you know, all of those books, right? So they don't have, they don't, we don't but have. What about a, 789, movie 789? Those are canon. They're, they're, those are 30 years. Aren't they 30 years after? Yeah, but we know what happens during part of it. We could talk, we could handle that later. Yeah, we we'll handle we'll movie 789 that. later. If it was up to me, they would just they would them. expunge those from yes, canon too. Yes, but the fact that that they're going to zoom in on Luke. Okay, we're after Jedi. You know, Darth Vader and the and the Emperor are dead. Luke is the, is basically rebuilding the Jedi Order. Yeah. yeah, they've now they've they've connected to. He's got Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. and Ahsoka now, Tano. Ahsoka Tano. Sorry, and in Grogu, like, who's getting her own series? Yes, of You're course. Really? Right? Yep. Everybody's getting her own series right now, but Grogu. Is such a provocative character for some reason. Like he's just really not just yeah. not just cute. There is he's, some, he's adorable and provocative. There's some totally depth agree. there. And then Luke with him, like watching them, you, they have Luke teach him and all that. Like I was like, am I actually seeing this? I couldn't believe yeah. someone had the balls. Now, but, look at wait. Let me finish. They have <laughs> Star Wars has so much unspent capital. Yeah, they have yeah. so much that they could tap into. I mean. Oh my God! There literally, there's there's ten thousand hours of Star Wars that needs to be written and done. They they picked the absolute correct thing to show us that we need more Luke yeah, Skywalker. Yeah. So, but think remember? about it though: we're reviewing a show on Boba Fett, and we're talking about Luke and Grogu. Exactly, wow. I'm with you. I'm with you on that because we it, it's not our fault. It's not our fault. They yeah. they we're, I'm watching Boba Fett. I'm like, this is cool. I'm enjoying it. You know, I I can I'm gonna. Right, what was the, the worst it. part? Worst part. Oh, I got it. I, By far, the the absolute, the season of the the season? absolute yeah. worst thing that came on screen with those goddamn motorcycles. The Power Rangers. Those Power Ranger <laughs> stupid hover bikes. The mods. I mean, yeah, whoever, the mods. whoever designed them, this is the only thing I could think of. Yeah, that's Favreau, what I was thinking Favreau of. Favreau was like, yeah, you guys go out and make, go make some hover scooters. <laughs> Okay, and they bring him on, and he's like, I have to use him. We don't have any other props. I have to use these. They were like chrome plated, I know, it was shiny so scooters themselves. They were yes. anti Star Wars. I know. They were the, somebody said, once oh, somebody said they're the Power Rangers, like, that's it. They're oh the Power God. Rangers. It's terrible. So that man. was the worst. Terrible. That's exactly what I was thinking. I mean, I liked the mod, I liked the characters were okay. Yeah, and they the were mods cool. Were okay. They were like, and the mods works. weren't that great. I mean, yeah, but if you could I look, mean, like, oh, cool, she has a totally fake arm. All right, that's cool. No, but, but that could have been a lot better. It could have been know, better. Or Alita, less like things just glued onto your head. I mean, whatever. They could have been better. They, they should have been a lot General better. Grievous kind of level. No, not that. It doesn't be that drastic. More Alita. Think of the think of the, the yeah, cyborgs. Yeah, but you know the, the thing. Alita. The thing I didn't like about the cyborgs it was like they were like a gang kind of. And it didn't really fit into the world well. Like their motorcycles didn't yeah. fit into the they, world. They didn't fit into Star yeah. Wars that well. It was not. It was not written well. There's that was a the vibe, problem. and they didn't fit the vibe. They didn't fit the vibe. All right, let, but we got to right. get back to the beginning now. Let's go all the way back. All yeah. right. When when we see Boba Fett in the Sarlacc pit, awesome. Yeah. Amazing. I never thought I would actually get to watch that happen. Yeah, right. Yeah. So he he. With and with all of his, you know, inner strength, right? This really cool character who's been through a hell of a lot, muscles his way out of the Sarlacc pit next to a awesome. skeleton. Remember, he looks at the uh, digested mm. person stormtrooper. Yeah. 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 Then you know he gets captured, which he probably would have. Um, you know, th his whole interaction with the, uh, you know, with the uh, sand people. I liked it. I loved the idea of it. 
I, I liked fleshing out the Tuscan you know, uh, Raiders I, as, I a, as a culture and as a people. I yeah. didn't think they executed that as well as I would want them to. Yeah, agreed. I felt like the Tuscan Raiders were a little thin. There wasn't enough meat on the bone there. I just didn't, you know, I, I didn't feel that great about it. I, that's when I first started to see the holes in, in the quality of the writing. But it was cool. I, I liked it. I liked that he was bodily injured. Mm -hmm. And I liked yeah. that he had a lot of healing to do, which yeah. is really good because the healing, you know, he needed more than just physical healing. He needed psychological healing. And I like healing. that he's building his crew. I mean, I love his assassin. You know, she's yeah. awesome. She is awesome. ming -Na Wen, she is yeah. badass. And when I, I found out how old death. she was, I'm like, oh my God, really? She looks fantastic she's for old her she? age. She's as old as we are. Oh my God. She's good old for as her, we man. are. Good for her. Yeah, no, yeah. she's looks she, fantastic. She's amazing. I love but, her. I've loved her and I liked the first time I saw her decades ago. The Wookiee. Tough guy, the yeah. Wookiee oh, yeah. He's great. He's great. great but, idea. you know, again, a little cartoony. But whatever. A little, but that's a little cartoony. But in a Star Wars yeah, way. Right. No, I thought he, I bought it. I liked him, though. I mean, I wanted to really yeah. like that character. So, of, I, course okay. there, of course there would be a Wookiee know, a Wookiee, a Wookiee that's like off, so off the rails like that. So I think he's yeah. building a crew. He's sort of establishing his the way he's going to do things. He wasn't a great mob boss, but he's still no. feeling his his way and you know he managed to somehow a little bit pull it out at the end so it was a it was very much a, a origin story kind of of a season for boba fett i think um if they're going to do a second season they got to really get into it you know yeah. it's like no no more of this origin crap you know that's just he, he's got to really come into his own. He did not really fully come into his they own. Didn't, in no, they didn't. No, they didn't. It didn't fully click. It didn't fully feel yeah. like they got to like the the point where we're seeing the right story. The thing, and then you know, they changed his armor. Like we really, we gotta dig in. On did this. they really? They changed his armor. How? He, if you look at a picture of the old Boba Fett suit and you look at what he's wearing now. It's not just because he gained weight. I mean, yeah. I Does mean, it have USB ports or something? What's going on? Yes, of course. This character is bigger than you know the the, the actor that they had playing yeah. Boba Fett. But they, if you look at the two, they made changes to the armor. Like he doesn't really look completely like Boba Fett anymore, and, and that really was weird Why to would me. They do that. Just mm -hmm. take a look. I just I'm just going to encourage right, right. you to look, right. and you'll see. So there's differences. They painted some things differently. Things weren't you know they didn't track completely, and and it was really odd to me because. As I'm watching it, I'm like, well, he's kind of like Boba Fett, but he's not all the way Boba Fett. All right. What was your favorite part of the season? My favorite part? <laughs> favorite part. <laughs> My favorite part, other than Luke and Grogu. And, and yeah, yeah. Putting the Luke and Grogu aside is like, that's like, that's how it was like a mini season inside this season. Right. Besides that. The other five episodes, what was your favorite part? I can part? tell you right now. Go ahead, Bob. Two words. Cad. Bane. Cad Bane. Cad Bane. That's it. Cad Done. Bane. I want a whole series with him. Although he's dead. But he was Maybe. awesome. He was awesome. Maybe. Yeah, and Elephant, was fantastic Elephant's from character any angle. was awesome. You know, the actor that plays Ugh. plays the marshal. Loved him. He yes. fit into Star Wars very well, oddly well, so, right? He slipped uh, right in. I've, I've heard the series described as a space western. Right. And it is. It is, it of is, course. So 100%. Yeah. It was a space western. They leaned into that. You know, the whole free town with the sheriff was yeah, great. Yeah. And Cad Bane was, <sighs> was a western cowboy gunslinging villain yeah. you know assassin badass total badass, badass. Yep. total badass he was in the uh, uh the cartoon series yeah. the bad batch that's where i first saw him as a car cartoon character loved him there mm -hmm. i was very happy to see him reprised in, as a right. live and there's action a lot character. of history and they i think they they needed to do a little bit more history with him to, to really integrate him into that into this season a little bit better not yeah not a lot but a little bit more would have been you would have made it more poignant. Well, okay, ah, you know, you got you got to be careful, right? Like when you're when you when you have a character like that, you know, you can't oversaturate the character because the character has to be mysterious. Yes. If you do, it's I like agree. the shark in Jaws, right? You can't show the shark too much. You can't show the shark. Too so much. you can't. This guy, this guy was was, <laughs> was an accident, uh, He was. If you think about the character, and there's you know there is a lot about this character that, that's out there. There's a lot more to learn about yeah. him. He was in the Bad Batch and all that, right? I got to find but, him. But. He's deadly serious. You can't watch this guy eat cereal. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You can only yeah. see him when he's doing something so that is in that That's day. an interesting sure. observation, Jay, because I think some people made that observation about Boba Fett. Yeah. That he that when you have a series yes. focusing on him entirely, much. he loses some of his mystique he does. by Absolutely. necessity. And so it's got to evolve into a different character. And they were definitely trying to do that. This wasn't Boba Fett. The old Boba Fett. You're right. It wasn't. It was a new character, 
And when they showed know, him on the toilet, that, wow. That, that was, <laughs> well, that, that transition is, is tricky. And again, again, that's why I gave him a B plus. I was like, it was good. It was all right. It worked out. It but they didn't risky. They didn't nail it. They did not. No, nail they could have. You know, now that you say it that way, because, you know, that is it on the that's nose. It. That's, that's it on it. the nose. Maybe they needed, even though this is about Boba Fett and it's his show, maybe they needed to show him less and have him be continue to be that mysterious character. Focus because, more on his minions. Because, you know, like Boba Fett, without without him wearing his helmet, right? Because he, it's it's so, like he's so... a different character. Right. It's like, it's, he's so much in the helmet. He's so yeah. much in the suit. And I think that they were having trouble figuring out how to pull him out of that suit and still maintain state, you know? Yeah. So I think that is inherently the flaw with what's going on here. There's a conceptual problem in the whole of the, of the Without whole a doubt. Boba Fett yeah. story. And they need to figure out how to fix it. Yeah. Or, or you know, maybe, you know... Or, or lean into it and make it work as a new character, Yeah, basically. maybe. Yeah. Um, beyond that, like, my overall opinion was there is a director one of the directors right you know how they have multiple directors yeah. for, for these types of tv shows you know they might have four or five directors like you know be included in one of the seasons the uh the director that they used for the last episode in my opinion is the worst director that were on their staff in the last episode yeah so the last episode to me which, which was you know the key episode the that was the big that was the big episode yeah you know, without, you know, just get cutting right to it, th this director is a very cheesy director. Mm -hmm. So he, he, the way he sets things up, the way that, the way that he executed the decisions that were made in the script, I feel were very poorly realized. Mm -hmm. Like as an example, during the, the big fight scene, you know, you have, you have characters who can fly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, isn't it frustrating when the character can do something and the, 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 the writing, you know, the story like hamstrings them to not do certain things because they yeah. can't figure out. That. But you could retcon that easily because I'm sure that their flying is limited. But you have to you have to say it then because we haven't seen limited they don't flying. Have, it. They don't have infinite fuel. You it's got to be limited. No, you're correct, Steve. But they haven't introduced them having a problem with with the amount of time that they can fly at all but yet. For it, example. Why, why do the Jedis instantly turn off their lightsabers when they're done using them? Partly for safety, I imagine, yeah, but I think right. also because those power cells that are in there, which is canon, by the way, those power cells are limited. You don't want to have the thing on one second more than you absolutely need it to be on because you have limited power. It in is there. cool looking too when they turn them on and off. I mean, that's I know, but that's it. I know, but it does make sense. So at the same thing, the, I don't. I think the Mandalorians with the jetpacks don't just they're not just constantly flying around. That would be cheesy. That's true. But they should just use it. No, in but bursts, tactically, in bursts when it's tactically they, very they make, boring. All right, all right. Here and here's my big problem with this one. So rewatch yeah. the episode. Yeah. I, I know that we already talked about this, yeah. but they were making decisions combat decisions that were very poor decisions yeah. that I don't think that the yeah. Mandalorian and that Boba Fett would make. They made very bad decisions in I agree. combat. I agree. And if you, yeah, that's the thing. It's, we talk about this. Like if you, if you establish something like these guys are tactically brilliant, you have to live up to that. You have to write to that, to that yeah. bar that you set. You know, these are, the, you know, these are two individual bounty hunters who survive in a very dangerous universe and they thrive in a very dangerous universe. Doing something very dangerous. Doing something well. very dangerous because they're really good. They're careful, they're tactical, and, you know, they're very good at what they do and they have to always live up to that. And that takes good writing, yeah. good directing, good choreography, good storytelling. And when and when yeah, if you just yeah, they, have them get into trouble because they made a stupid tactical decision, right? It's there's got to be a reason for it, and it, it just it, otherwise it didn't it, feel right. right. I I want to see good tactics. I don't want them to see. Oh look, I rolled a twenty three times in a row. No, I don't want to see you get incredibly lucky. Yeah. I want to see. I want to see payoff based on forethought and skill and tactics. You know, not yeah. just getting crazy lucky. But also, I he, mean, if they have the, the skill, battle, that's different. Heat of the battle decisions. Like this, this is a reoccurring thing that comes up with in movies and you know tabletop games and everything. Like there's always like these heat mm -hmm. of the battle decisions that need to be made. Now the the fortunate thing that writers get is they get time to that's think the, about yeah. the heat of the battle decisions. And when I see they could, that, they could spend an hour making a two second split decision exactly, for a character. Yeah. So yes. they're sitting there and like the decisions that these guys were making, one, they weren't fun. They weren't provocative. I wasn't like, oh, cool decision. Like, you know, yeah. they should be doing something with each other. Like these two Mandalorian characters should be should have done, they should have done something together. And I kept feeling like they they threw it away. I kept feeling like, oh, they threw away that that battle. Yeah, like, you yeah. know, those robots yeah. that had the shields on them. Like to me, like they, they were went, cool. they they overplayed that way too long. It took too right. long to, for those fights to finish. And it's okay. I mean, I don't also I don't think characters like that should be perfect or mystical or whatever. The, it's you know 
they're human or whatever, yes. or some, some, some species. And you know, they're flawed. They're going to make mistakes, even if you're at the top of your game. So it's okay for that to happen too, but they should, you know, we should experience that with them. Like, yes, it's going like, to be provocative. Oh, I can't believe I did something so stupid, you know, and or getting a little bit lucky every now and then is fine. Yeah, but they, I hate when characters like that, like, are constantly making incredibly lucky things. Like, they would have been dead a hundred times yep. over. Yep. You do not survive in that game by being lucky. Yes. You do it by eliminating luck as a factor. Yep. Yes. Um, exactly. So, yeah, you, get, you cannot overplay that hand. And I think they did that a little bit. So, um, lots of, so, yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of problems with it. But overall, it was enjoyable. It moved the ball forward on those Star Wars mo- storytelling on the whole Mandalorian you know, side plot uh, that, we're, that, uh, that we're enjoying a great deal. Can't wait for the third season of Mandalorian. Um, I hope they do make a second season of Boba Fett Me too. because I think that they have, they, you know, first seasons are tough introducing. They, they had a lot of stuff to do and they did, they, they did an okay job. It, they were, it was above the waterline. The, the Luke and Mandalorian episodes. But they were fantastic. A plus. Yeah. A plus. Uh, I mean, my God, like that whole, the whole interaction with Luke, you know, and it wasn't like, it wasn't like combat rich. I mean, it was literally dialogue. We were just there, talking. Yeah, I'll have to say, I wouldn't give it an A plus. I'd give it like maybe an A minus. There was a couple of, like the training montage was a little bit too training montage yeah. You know what I mean? Come I on, it was a little much. But I love they it. Didn't. it was adorable. <laughs> I know, but there was just a little bit too much of the training montage. Other, that was my only quibble with those two episodes, but they were otherwise really incredible. I really, I just thought it was incredible to, to zoom in, come down, and be like, we're gonna spend some time with Luke Skywalker. You know, like the, the, the badass yeah. version of Luke Skywalker. Yeah, yeah, the one who took out, how many of those did? Dark Troopers, oh my oh, god. Man. That was, the, that was incredible. Oh. That was the best season in Mandalorian, the scene in all of Mandalorian yep. was Luke kicking ass on those those I, droids, oh my god. I didn't realize how much I needed to see that until I saw <laughs> yeah. it, you know? <laughs> yeah, because we don't really ever get to see Luke at his absolute peak. No, no, we, it, yeah, you know? we, we, that's why they need to do this. That's yeah. why Favreau, I, I, God, I hope that that was a big test. All right, if you all enjoyed right. this episode, <laughs> thank you guys. So you had to sit through a lot of nostalgia here. They were saying it in the chat. We love it. <laughs> we, you know, we watched these movies when we were children, you know, like, you mm-hmm. know, seven, eight, Our whole lives. life, we yeah. grew up with Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars it's is our lives. Yeah. Um, but if you enjoyed this, we would love for you to go to alphaquadrant6.com or you can go to patreon.com forward slash alphaquadrant6 if you would like to support this show and we will see you next time. Yeah.